This is the Kochner site at the western edge of our property. The Kochner head frame is in the middle of the picture and the hoist room is to the right of it. The ore from Kochner is dropped down our muck handling system to 36 level and then it's trammed five kilometers through an underground tunnel to the reed shaft at the Campbell site and then sent to the Campbell mill for processing. The Campbell site sits directly beside the town of Barbertown. This is where the reed and the Campbell shafts are located. The reed shaft is on your left and the Campbell shaft is to the right of it. The Campbell shaft is the original shaft that was used by Campbell Mine and is one of the two shafts that we are currently decommissioning. The Campbell mill is located on the right of the Campbell shaft. We have just recently spent $4 million on improving the reliability of this mill. In front of the Campbell shaft are various office buildings and our assay lab. This is our recreation center off to the left and the Campbell Main Tailings Pond. We are currently in the process of completing the Stage 7 dam raise, which will provide suitable storage for water and solids generated from the Campbell Mill over the next several years. The Red Lake site is where one shaft and the Red Lake Mill are both located. This is the second shaft that we, that we are currently decommissioning. Directly behind the shaft is the Red Lake Mill, Behind the mill, there is a haulage road that joins the Red Lake and the Campbell property together. Here in the picture is a Red Lake tailings pond, which has storage for the next several years. As you drive into the bomber site, you can see the 282 person camp on the left and the main administration building, and then also the bomber shaft and the hoist room behind it. The haulage road in the background connects the Bomber, Red Lake, and the Campbell site together. Ore is hauled on this road to the Campbell Mill for processing. You can see the Red Lake Mill in the background. In this section, I'm going to fly us through a 3D presentation of the geology and resources at the Red Lake operation. My intention is to give you a visual experience of the Red Lake ore bodies, as well as illustrate that we still have plenty of room to build from this recent result with the ultimate aim of putting our foot on another zone of very high grade gold mineralisation. We start our fly through of the model with this LiDAR image looking down on the towns of Barmertown and Koshner. As we increase transparency, we can see through to the underlying mine workings as they are projected to surface. Koshner, which is its own independent ore body, is located to the top left of the airport in the image. The Campbell and Red Lake mines are located on the centre right. Campbell and Red Lake were operated by separate owners throughout most of their production histories. However, they are in fact part of the same mineral system of multiple stacked ore bodies. A revision of the mineral resources commenced back in February when we inherited a resource model comprising more than 6,500 individual wireframes, which I am showing here in the purple shapes. We decided to completely modernise the resource by going back to first principles and building geological models from scratch. We re-wireframed all mineralised domains, which are shown here in the multiple colours, utilising information from 47,000 drill holes, totalling over 7 million metres of drilling. The drilling database is one of the largest we have ever worked with and includes just short of 6 million samples. The modernisation exercise resulted in consolidation of 142 individual block models developed by previous owners to a more manageable 19 models. The new geological wireframes constructed for this estimate are grouped into colours representing each of the 19 new block models created. In this next scene, I have further simplified our new block models by grouping into the upper Campbell in blue Upper Red Lake in orange, Lower Campbell in light blue, and Lower Red Lake in grey. The high grade zone, which was essentially depleted between 2003 and 2016, is shown in dark grey for reference. However, it is worth noting that there are minor remnant resources remaining outside of previous workings in the high grade zone. The most significant result in the new model update comes from the Upper Campbell area of the mine 
where we have reported a new resource of 4.3 million ounces, grading 10.5 grams per tonne. This resource starts from surface and extends to a depth of 1,200 metres below. We are zooming in now to look at a window through the Upper Campbell area sliced at a level 150 metres below surface. This view is cut from a 100 metre vertical section through the Upper Campbell mine and illustrates how grade control was done in the past which each, with each of the coloured points representing an individual underground face sample. Stopes and development drives are highlighted by the grey as-built shapes. Referring to the legend on the top right, it is evident that incredibly high grades were mined from narrow structures now represented by mining voids in the grey panel shapes. And just to emphasise the grade for a moment, red represents sample grades above 10 grams per tonne, pink above 50 grams per tonne and purple above 200 grams per tonne. This type of ore control sampling historically substituted for more expensive grade control drilling. Drilling eventually caught up with mining, which, is in, which in this scene is shown by the blue line traces. By switching on the assay results, which are filtered above three grams per tonne, we can clearly see that the historic data is delineating areas of mineralisation that lie outside of and beyond the mined out high grade shear zones. Interestingly, the mineralised volume in the centre has been delineated by very close space drilling, giving us high confidence in the geological continuity of mineralisation. In this next view, I am showing a slice of our new block model with estimated block grades filtered above 3 grams per tonne gold. Our classification methodology has been conservative, particularly in the Upper Campbell and Red Lake areas of the mine. A two metre wide buffer was created around all old workings in these areas which have been excluded from the models and are reflected in the numbers reported in the updated resource. The two metre buffer has not been applied to the lower areas of the mine where we have modern survey control. We transition now to a view of the stope outlines generated by the mining shape optimizer for which we constrain and report resources for inferred categories or better. We have applied the same methodology to the lower Campbell, upper and lower Red Lake and Koshner ore bodies, resulting in similar resource uplifts as we have seen at Upper Campbell. I'm now going to switch gears and speak about our views of the district upside potential beyond the footprint of the 11 million ounce resource. The rationalisation of the geological framework and consolidation of resource block models have made it possible for us to evaluate future discovery potential in a more holistic way than previously. We are now able to look at data and information for the whole of the operation, not just subsets of individual ore bodies. This is facilitating recognition of new target areas that may not have been effectively explored despite a 70 year mining history at Red Lake. I have now switched on the drill hole traces for all drilling ever completed at Red Lake. Here we see the 47,000 drill holes which make up the 7 million metres of information in our database. And now I am switching on the results from the 6 million samples that inform our new block models. Given the amount of data I am only showing drill hole grade information above 3 grams per tonne, which approximates the cutoff grades for which we have reported our updated mineral resource. The next scene takes us to a plan view of the surface geology. I would like to draw your attention to a very important geological feature on this map. As I fade out the surface geology, I will emphasise an irregular 3D surface which is one of the main geological boundaries in the Red Lake District. In geological terms, this surface is known as the Bruce Channel Unconformity. It is important because the unconformity marks the geological boundary that separates Barmer Assemblage, Mafic and Ultramafic rocks from the younger Bruce Channel Assemblage sedimentary rocks. The Barmer Assemblage forms the core of the geology in the centre of the map 
which is, which is enclosed by the Bruce channel unconformity. What is apparent when I turn on the drilling results again is that we can see gold mineralization is most commonly hosted in the Barmer assemblage rocks and generally localized near the Bruce Channel unconformity at each of Red Lake, Campbell and Koshner. One of the ways we can assess how effective exploration has been done in the past is to look at all of the drilling ever completed. When we do this at Red Lake, we see that most of the blue drill hole traces cluster around the known mineral systems, as one would expect. However, and somewhat surprisingly, there are corridors that remain relatively under-tested, particularly in the hanging wall of the main mineralised mine trends at Red Lake and Campbell. These areas are where we are focusing our discovery drilling programs to target and drill extensions and repeats of these incredibly well mineralised corridors. We are also working with a number of expert technical consultants to understand the geological conditions that prevailed to enable development of the high grade zone at Red Lake. We are applying this knowledge in our step out drilling to help us recognise similar geologic conditions which will ensure we pay the right amount of attention to the evidence that can sharpen focus on delivery of future high grade discoveries. I believe the opportunity for us at Red Lake is a great example of where the whole is greater than the sum of the individual parts. We've been able to bring a different lens and approach to the mineral resource solution. For the first time, the mineral resources and geological upside can be evaluated under a rationalised geological framework that can be interrogated from a single consolidated database.